This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So we're doing something new this year for the first time. And I have been acting today as the CEO of the fictitious company GoMommy.com. And we're calling a representative from each team into my office where I then challenge them and say, why aren't we doing better? Why isn't our website secure? Why are clients calling us complaining about their websites not being available? And then in 10 minutes, we challenge them to um, present a business case and persuade me to invest in security. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I am the CEO of GoMommy.com, our finance officer and our ops officer. Well, I'm Rusty, your head IT person. Perfect, Rusty. So you're team three, right? Yes. All right, so let's talk. I'm getting all kinds of irate calls from our customers, particularly our platinum customers. Okay. So I know you guys took over the network yesterday, and it's yes. really tough. And we, uh, we asked you to do some very interesting things, but we didn't tell our customers we fired the IT team, and now they're calling us and saying, for instance, our, our best customer that we have, which is uh, quickiepills.com, their website was only up 79% of the time. Do you know how much it's supposed to be up? 99.99% of the time. That's right. That's right. We get paid at 99.9. Yes. So I'm going to have to call this guy in a few minutes. He's a good friend of mine. What am I going to tell him? What's going on here? Um, we ran into a couple issues. Um, there have been some malicious attacks coming towards our network. Um, we did our best to mitigate them. We um, have the boxes locked down with a couple um, pieces of software that uh, will prevent attackers from getting in and prevent uh, malicious attacks against us. Um, SQL injections, uh, cross-site right. scripting. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know what any of that stuff is, but where did we get this new software? Um, there's an Apache module called um, Mod Security, and it's an open source, uh, highly vetted piece of software. Um, is it expensive? It, it's, it is free. Free is good. Free yeah. is good. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea this year that we actually have customers that are calling on the phone and complaining because that's putting an aspect more and more like daily life. So when you say they came in and they deleted, did we lose any critical data? Did, did, was it compromised? They have, they have all the data. They did have all the data that was in the database. Did you report that to Phil, the CIO? We reported an incident response about it. You did? Yes. Because we need to tell our customers if their data was stolen. That's one of our requirements. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing today to make that better? What are we doing to fix it? Well, like I said, we already restored, so we have, the system is, the site is back up. What we've been doing is we've been changing passwords more frequently. We've been monitoring the processes. We've been trying to secure the database in any way that we possibly can. So what we're looking for also is soft skills. We're looking for the ability to communicate, to present to senior management, uh, to make a business case, and to take all the jargon and all the technology out and just describe it in terms that business leaders will understand. Linux, um, in my experience, it has been. Um, you just need to put the right software on there. So we talked a little bit about operating systems and a virtual instance. Mm -hmm. It's complicated, <laughs> but, but so tell me what else you need to do to make our network come up to 90%. Um, I mean, really, once we get those backups going, then we can just change over. Um, I think we're going to switch our web services over to that virtual development. My name is Adrian Stone. I'm the Director of Security Response for BlackBerry Research in Motion. Uh, my team is specifically responsible for responding to security events in any of our product software. So our BlackBerry phones, our, our service infrastructure, as well as our uh, traditional you know, shrink-wrapped uh, software, uh, server software. Our sponsors come down because they're really interested in hiring these students. Um, they come to our, we hold a recruiting reception on Saturday evening and that's, that's the main drive of most of our sponsors coming on site is to participate in that and um, hire these students into intern positions or in possibly full time once they've graduated. 
one, uh, an amazing talent pool. So as an employer, uh, it's definitely an opportunity to to look at you know emerging talent both in the in, in the well in the security space at large, but also in various verticals that relate to our business. Uh, the second thing too is just to be able to support uh, the activity. I think it's critically important for all of the employers to make sure that we're continuing to seed and fund and support these types of efforts. Deloitte, for example, has hired several students out of the East Coast, out of here in Texas as well. Um, we've got Boeing, who was so impressed with one of our teams at a regional event. This team didn't even make it out to the nationals, um, but they were so impressed with how well they worked together that they went back and created positions to bring on the entire team. So, uh, they're, yeah, they're getting really good jobs. And so what do you value? Uh, what qualities do you value? Sure, sure a couple things. One, uh, communication. How well are they communicating as a group and as a team? The second thing is really the ability to, to deal with ambiguity. A lot of these events, uh, both what they're, what they're dealing with as part of the competition, do mirror real world situations where there's an event or a consequence that isn't initially understood right out of the gate. And so how well are they able to go through and triage and determine the next steps? So communication, ability to deal with ambiguity. Uh, and then the other thing is ability to deal with adversity. Uh, one of the things that you see as the competition progresses and teams are getting uh, hit in the face more and more and more is how well are they able to deal with it? How, are, how well are they able to deal with the pressure? So those are the three things specifically from the security response side of my business that, that I'm looking at and have been very, very impressed with, with what I've seen uh, here with all the teams. All right, Dave, the server is up now. It's, um, right it's on now, Wiki. All the instructions I'm actually there. not working on um, shells. Not essentially, I don't like. I just started both of these. Um, a lot of the guys have. Uh, this, uh, Scap has, I think, 30, 30 shells or so. 49. 49. 49 on all the Linux servers. Is Everyone's sending me this, so it's, it's like right. oh, okay. So you're like the shell keeper. Take, yeah, 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 I can't yeah. take credit for all of them. So um, he's doing Linux. He's doing Windows and everybody, Linux. Everybody, Armitage is up. We can now share session, share shells. Um, the wiki page has been updated. If you currently do not have Armitage running, please go to the wiki. Get it. Get on your backtrack. Pass the session. Pass the shells. Get all sorts of fun automatic persistence that will let you know a third way to backdoor them. We like more backdoors. We are, yes, you do. <laughs> One thing to add, uh, if your Metasploit's update as of 7 p.m. last night, there's a link just to download Armitage, just untar it and run that local client. It won't interfere with anything else you've got going on. Uh, connect that one to the actual server we've got. And I'll provide more, which IPs I've got so you can pass sessions. And I'll keep finding new ones to keep uh, to keep our accesses fresh. All right. cool. Yeah, so most of us are using Metasploit in some form or fashion. Um, a, f a few of them have, few of us have our own little special from our uh, office stuff. Um, one of the things that I developed for it is a connectionless sort of backdoor that basically once installed continues to uninstall service packs and, and things. So if it sees that service pack three is installed, it will say, okay, I need to uninstall it quietly. Um, if it sees the MSO 67, a patch for MSO 67 or MSO 9050, it will automatically uninstall those. It also has um, some plugins to steal passwords and stuff in clear text. Normal stuff. Normal stuff. <laughs> so the best in what I thought was funny or the best in what made the kid the saddest? Okay. Uh, the, I think for me, my favorite story uh, would be the first time that we actually used DD uh, dev random uh, as an input to overwrite the beginning of a disk. Um, all of the students thought that they had a hardware failure because they didn't understand why their systems weren't booting. And so the team had to come into us, the, the white team, and say, you know, are, did you guys do something? Did you mess up? And we're like, no, we just overwrote the MBR and the beginning of the disk, the first partition. And they're like, well, that's funny. And they went back to the teams. No, it's not a hardware failure. Figure it out. So eventually, you know, somebody said, well, let's just reinstall it. And then we did it to them again. Because every time they restore from an insecure backup, again, I said it's the unique part of this contest, we can just get back in. So it's to our benefit once they start figuring out what we're doing to just knock them out and knock out the system and bring it back up. Uh, my best CC story from this year probably would be uh, we're defending the cloud and one of my servers, it was a Windows 2000 server, we're waiting for it to get patched 
And in the meantime, it's still vulnerable to pretty much every single attack that you can imagine. We can't firewall it. And so I'm literally getting exploited. They're doing some VNC exploits, so they're moving my mouse and keyboard and canceling my updates. So at this point, I realized I had to. I restarted the system and was literally installing updates and moving the mouse and clicking so they couldn't tab to hit cancel or like literally just fighting over the keyboard and mouse. And that was probably the, the most interesting attack that we had to deal with. It was the second or third year I was part of this. Um, one of the teams, we ended up, they, by the third day, they were the only team we could get anything with. Um, and we put such a hurt on them, but at the end of the third day, um, they were fighting each other. They had, we had pissed them off at each other so bad because, you know, the firewall guy was blaming the networking guy. The networking guy was blaming the patch guy. We had them all fighting so much that one of the, I think one of the team captains actually threw a punch at his uh, teammate. Let's see, regionals, because at lunchtime we were not even in the top three. And so we received the email because they didn't announce it and our team was just so deflated. And we didn't really come out like it, but we kind of just sat down and then we were like, well, we got to hammer this out. And so over the afternoon is when we, when we had all but one service up the whole afternoon and got the injects done like we were supposed to. And so that was probably my best story. And just hanging out with people afterwards in South Dakota was where we went, a 14 hour drive. Now probably the, the best you know, student reaction story is that uh, we did have one team one year and we were just continually just getting back in, back in and back in. They couldn't figure out what we were doing. And so at the end of the contest, you know, we're all kind of hanging out in the lobby. I had this team captain come up to me and he said, how did you do it? I have to know, what did you do? And so I, and I, at the end of the contest, I always give a speech and I talk about what they should have learned. I had these props this year. And one of the props with his password list all printed out. And I said, well, I had this. He said, where'd you get that? I said, well, it was world readable on your system. And he said, well, can I borrow that? I said, sure. So he walked over to his teammate and just started beating him, screaming, you did this, you did this, you did this. And that was a good day. That was a good day for me. Yeah, there was that one year we went to regionals. And uh, basically what happened was we had a construction crew come in. And um, there's tons of social engineering that go on at the competition. And you have the red team coming at you pretty hard and any vector that they can find. So a construction crew comes in, they say they're, you know, blowing up walls on the other side of campus, they just need to check some things out. So they walk in and uh, our team's just like, no, you got to get out of here. You, you got to leave right now. And um, they're, they're just kind of like, okay, well, we have whatever. <laughs> and they just walk away and, you know, two days later, someone comes up and they're like, yeah, they were just doing their job. You, they were supposed to be here. And we're just like, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Most of the teams were up there doing pretty well. They were losing minimal points here and there because we were taking credit card data and stuff like that. Uh, so we decided to turn on the, I'm gonna make it look like all your hardware broke switch. Uh, so we started going through working the systems themselves, formatting master boot records. Uh, then we started patching and upgrading firmware on hard drives so that we would null those out so they couldn't get any of their backups or get to anything. Uh, started doing protocol level DOSs, so like Apache null range DOS and things like that. So it wasn't, you know, the anonymous over packet use DOS, it's more single packet, own them, turn the box off DOS. Um, and then in concert with all of that, we also just got a uh, new bootloader that we scripted across all of the systems to make it boot up and show them only the Nyan cat. I, I, I refuse to answer that question, sir. A few years ago, they, they, uh, they gave us systems that they'd lost, the, we had uh, an application that they'd lost the source code to. Um, it, was, uh, it was actually turned out as a, it was a legacy application that we had run on old Windows 2000 um, that we couldn't upgrade to. Um, well, it turns out it was just a .NET um, site, and I, I was able to um, decompile it, find out what it was actually doing, and rewrite it in PHP. Um, and we threw away the old 2000 system. That was, it was artificially sane. If it was anything greater than 2000, it wouldn't, it would refuse to run. Um, so we threw away that old code and installed it on PHP and ran it on a brand new Linux system. So we were able to, to secure the system that they were explicitly trying to prevent us from doing. And that's maybe not in the spirit of the competition, but it was, it was, a, it was a fun experience. Uh, two years ago, um, I immediately, as I walked through the room, saw somebody that I thought was pretty sharp technically. And more than that, I'm looking for charisma. And he was a very, very charismatic person. And I could see that he immediately took charge and he was helping members of the team meet their different commands and requirements and tasks and just natural leadership capabilities. So I actually tried to hire him 
but unfortunately he had been hired by a, um, a well-known company in Silicon Valley just the day before. And today, only two years later, uh, he is essentially running their vulnerability management program. That's the success story. I, I pretty much hold him up as the example for if you want to be in the business and you want to go a long way, this, this is how you do it. I have learned a lot. I've learned that security is not just running services or patching systems. It's, it's a complete um, mindset. You have to always be thinking of what are you doing and how could an attacker exploit that? And how could he make the worst of the situation which you're trying to get set up? Um, so I've learned that you can't rely on individual solutions, but you have to think across the board uh, uh, how everything relates together and how to manage complex systems. Today alone, I've learned how to configure a Juniper firewall. Um, I've learned a lot about Cisco networking in the past four weeks. I spent pretty much a month drilling on that to get ready for the competition. Um, a ton of stuff that I'd never thought I'd touch until I got out of college with Windows Server. So just being around these guys alone and what they're good at. Um, I'm not really a Linux guy, mainly Windows, but just being in the team alone, you kind of have to touch it a lot. And that's helped out with just about anything. So I'm not necessarily sitting around in my room crying myself to sleep because I can't configure something. So getting some hands-on experience and stuff I usually don't touch. In all honesty, I feel like the computer science department um, has a lot of good things going for it, but it doesn't really concentrate on a lot of the real world applications anymore. So like security and stuff like that. So when you start practicing for this kind of competition, you really get to see what actually goes on in the real world and like real world, app real world applications of what you've been learning. As the national CCDC wraps up and many of the seniors will go on to graduate and work in industry, others will carry on the torch at regionals in following years. And while the CCDC grows and many universities and corporations get involved, the nation prospers as a new generation of cyber defenders are born. A lot, a lot of default passwords. Uh, we, like a zillion websites. Yeah, about a zillion. Right, that's a scientific number. And that's technically accurate. Yes. Ah, okay. uh, the egg on our face. For a while, that there were actually pictures that weren't supposed to be on there for a bit. Like, oh, who was it that took? I thought those were ugly. But you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mind you, one of our people had seen it a long time ago. I was like, oh, I thought they were supposed to be there. For some reason, um, I, uh, as, I can't SU on when I'm uh, SSH'd in over there, and it's still having the same issue over here, obviously. Um, so I'm trying to figure out why I can't, because I need to be able to uh, be root. Yeah, be able to perform some things. Yeah. It's very useful. So I'm trying to troubleshoot that because it was working before. I'm trying to keep the mean, mean red team out. They removed LS and PS off one of our boxes, so it's just, it's just a mean thing to do. I, I don't understand. What is the, uh, tell me the IP. 199.193. When both of you say it, I don't know what it is. Well, we want to perform in unison. <laughs> Secure? <laughs> we're not at that step yet, man. We're, we're just worried about getting it going. If you're setting up a website for your new business, showcasing your portfolio, your new blog, domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. If you need to register a new domain, consider getting a new .com. You see, a .com is the original. We all know it's the best. It's globally understood. It has immediate credibility no matter what name you choose. Or if you're even into investing and buying and selling domains, .coms have the greatest aftermarket value. Find new .com domains over at domain.com. You know, Shannon and I love them because they're so easy to use, they're affordable, they're reliable. Plus, Domain.com, they're so active on social media like Twitter, they're at Domain.com, they got great customer support. It's really just a fun place to do business. So the guys over at Domain.com want to hook our fans up with an additional offer. Get this, 15% off the already affordable domain names and web hosting if you use the coupon code HACK5, H-A-K-5, at Domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and big savings, so don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. When you think domain names, think Domain.com.